Hello everyone, Kyle here bringing you yet another video that reminds me of why I need to stop joining clubs when I don't know what the name means. Today we're going to play some Subnautica, a game that combines all of humanity's fears into a neat little heart attack inducing game. Descend into the depths of an alien underwater world filled with wonder and peril. Uh, that's weird, this is the same description that sits outside of my local community swimming pool. Uh, craft equipment, pilots submarines and outsmart wildlife well we'll see about that to explore lush coral reefs volcanoes cave systems and more all while trying to survive oh if they hadn't clarified that last point i'd have assumed we wanted to swim into the volcanoes and drown as much as possible but i guess we can try it their way for once so we start our journey taking a memorable flight through space and time in a two-person escape pod let's not talk about the fact we've already left our field trip buddy to die. I'm sure they didn't suffer. Okay, they suffered a little. Well, this sure has all the comforts of home. A fire extinguisher flailing around wildly. Ah, yeah, I know when to be quiet. Well, what a lovely forced nap that was. Oh, this doesn't look good. Maybe there's some important information on the wall behind the fire. Fire detected in life pod. I gathered that much. Oh! Well, we burnt to death and we've come back to continue burning. This is what hell or using the toilets at McDonald's must feel like. Just have to... No, no, no. Okay, we died again. Wow. Talk about betting on the wrong horse. I'm surprised we even made it to the escape pod. Ah, the fire's extinguished. So, in this game, you have the usual things to monitor, such as a heart for health, an apple for food, a teardrop for how much you hate being thirsty, and that old O2, which is your ability to breathe. Let's take a look-see outside to see what kind of alien planet we've crashed onto. Hmm wet. Can you imagine how short the game would be if the character couldn't swim? You just leap into the ocean and sink to the bottom to be met with the end credits. Now, that's a game I could win. But alas, we can swim and therefore are doomed to try to survive. We can start this survival stuff by dropping some flares in case someone flies past looking for us. There we go. Nice, it's made the inside of the escape pod so bright that we could close our eyes and still see. So, I guess we want to repair some of this stuff and to do that we need to fabricate some tools and to do that we need to gather some materials what kind of a terrible future are we living in when tasks don't just complete themselves so much work right let's jump into the ocean through this little hole in the floor this way we can't see any danger surrounding us and if we can't see danger then it's only really dangerous for a short period while it's killing us rather than that period before killing us where we know it could kill us that's logic so we can gather scrap from the floor in order to turn it into titanium as well as break little limestone deposits for mystery cash prizes copper ore or not back to the ocean with you we can also find all kinds of alien life to abuse such as little pink blobs just gather them all up i might be removing them from their natural habitat and stuffing them down my pants but i'm not going to separate a family i'm not that much of a monster here you go you can live on the side of my life raft it it is a lot better for the both of us. Better for me. I meant it's better for me. I can use you guys as a little ladder now. See? Isn't this fun? Oh, what the hell? Did you just throw me into the air? Oh, I will kill your whole family. Only joking. Let's go home. Whee! This is slower than swimming normally, but far cooler. Right, we can gather some seaweed now to use for crafting later. We also get helpful little reminders that we still need to breathe thanks to this message and our fading eyesight. Here you go, little fella. Reunited with the ship. Let's make some titanium with the metal we found and some silicone rubber with the creep fine. Now we can make a survival knife, which puts me in the mood for some stabbing. Let's go back outside and see what we can stab. Gather some mushrooms. Not too many mushrooms though, as I don't have mushroom. M much room. I meant to say much room. Increased radiation? That's got to be a good thing, right? Oh, a little egg-shaped fish. And he's screaming at me. Go away! Oh god, ow. What a little jerk. Luckily inside of his little house, he's left his stash of sulfur. And he won't be needing it anymore as he's exploded into a billion pieces. Ha, <laughs> nature. You win and wild creature. Sulfur in hand, we can now craft the repair tool, which will go in our hand in place of the 
so far. Now to repair our home. Status okay? Well, even the computer has more optimism than I do. Oh, weird. We can't repair the fire extinguisher holder, even though it failed completely and allowed it to fly around. I guess it was working as intended, right? You also have to appreciate that the seat looks like it was designed by a carnival worker. To be fair though, it did save my life. So thank you, Carney. I'll try not to judge your kind as harshly the next time I visit one of your Hola. carnivals, which will be never, as I don't trust you. But what we can repair is this radio transmitter. I know, right? We're still using radio. No wonder we crashed. Attempting to joke aside, the radio is basically the thing that will push the story along as it reveals locations to explore in order to try and find other survivors. Spoiler alert, everyone's dead. So what it really does is it shows you locations that you can visit in order to rob the dead people Yoink. of their worldly possessions. And doesn't that sound way more fun than searching for alive people, huh? Thanks, radio. Don't mention it. So it's time we built some more tools and equipment, such as this scanner so that we can scan things, a standard O2 tank so that we can drown at a deeper depth, and some fins so that we can reach those depths faster. Let's go out and scan some stuff while we wait for a message to come through on the radio. What the scanning does is it unlocks information in your data bank so you can read and learn more about the plant life, animals and other alien stuff. I personally will just wait for David Amber to release a documentary on the planet and skip the reading part altogether. I mean come on, is this a computer game or a book? Exactly. Reading denied. But wait, don't give up on the idea of scanning just yet. There are other reasons to scan than just unexplained compulsion. You can also learn new recipes for crafting. Oh I think you you can at least. Maybe you don't. <laughs> we'll scan anyways, it seems to piss off the animals. Oh, this one looks like one of those guys from Half-Life 2. Blue palm, table coral, squidward. <laughs> the bubbles tickle my insides. Oh, and also we can use the knife we made to collect samples of plant life. Yeah, I know, another way to collect things. When you collect an item, it can unlock new recipes that you can check out in your pocket diary. Nice, high capacity O2 tank. That is more than a low capacity one and therefore I must have it. Ah, more egg fishes. Note to self, stay out of the caves as it's literally filled with jerks. The pocket diary also offers the ability to manage beacons, which comes in handy if you're a beacon kind of person. I personally just do as I do in real life and stumble around blindly until I accidentally find things of interest. So with all those attacks from egg jerk fish, we need to heal ourselves, which we can do with this medical kit fabricator that releases a new kit whenever it feels generous. Ah, uh, thank you. We can also unload all of our worries into storage so we can go out and find more. To learn new technologies, as in equipment, your best bet is to find little crates like this one. If it's open, you can scan the item inside. Sometimes an item takes multiple scans to learn, which means finding more of the same type of thing. We've just learned the sea glide, for instance, which sounds exciting. We've also got a message on the radio as seen by the fact it winks at us. This is LifePod 3, uploading our coordinates. We're plugging some holes in our emergency sea glide. So if we're late for the rendezvous, don't panic. Plug in some holes, hey? Also, don't go home without us. Don't leave without you, hey? Seriously. Two things that sound unlikely to be done right. Now we have a new location being tracked in the Beacon Manager. First, we'll make some filtered water which comes in a plastic bottle. Yes, that's right. We're still using plastic bottles and somehow crafting them out of fish. Oh, the human. Humanity. So, food and water sorted, it's time we make the sea glide. Ah, nice. I feel more glidey already. We have another message as seen by the floppy disk symbol here. Our pod was almost crushed by the Seamoth Bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system and this grim looking snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. Come get us already. Oh, uh, right. Snake thing trying to eat you. <laughs> yeah, you're on your own. I'll give it enough time for the snake to have eaten them and left with a full belly before before I go to their pod. That logic is how you survive in the wild or Australia. We'll glide on over to the first pod that had the whole patching issue. Oh, another mobile vehicle bay fragment. Let's get that. 
Could I want it now? Hmm, here's the pod. I don't think you patched the holes right, did you? I can still see it. Well, there's more PDA data in case you wanted to know what happened to them. But I'm pretty sure they're dead, and that's all I need to know. So we can grab this, which gives us a blueprint, a compass. Great. How useful. At least we'll know which way we're facing. Well, it's safe to say number three didn't do too well. So let's go check out the other one. But first, there's more of these blobfish, and I'm a big fan of anything gelatinous. So we'll go ahead and grab a couple of these. Ah, that should do nicely for now. It feels really good in my pockets. What the heck is this thing? It's like a whale without a face. A reef back, hey? Definitely either a whale type creature or a sea cow of some sort. It has plants on its back and the plants shoot little needles of joy. Lovely. Ah, oh, what's your problem? How do you even see me? You're a plant for goodness sake. Well, I can't seem to find anywhere to get milk, but it has tentacles. So it's very likely a whale. Do whales have tentacles? If they don't, they should. Okay, so we've reached number 17 and they left us part of a sea moth to scan, which was just very kind of them. Kind of makes me feel guilty for letting the snake creature kill them. However, seeing this tear in the pod, I feel a lot less guilty and glad I wasn't here. Home time. It's nice to have a floating pod to return to, right? Oh, another box and a mobile bay fragment. Yes, which means it's ours. Blobs, meet the other blobs this is your new home so um you know stick around <laughs> Yeah, I deserve to be here. So now with our old tank and some other ingredients, we can create a new bigger tank with much more breathability for that added ah feeling. I'm also going to build a floating air pump, staying in the theme with the idea that breathing is helpful to our endeavor of survival. And with a bit more crafting, we can now make a rebreather. I know, right? It's like breathing a breath of breathing. Will our breathing ever stop at this rate? Hmm, I feel like we could swim to the very bottom of the seabed now with all this equipment. Oh, what's this I've spied? A bioreactor fragment? Interesting, but not interesting enough to look for the rest of the pieces. Uh, what's happening? It sounds ever so exciting. Let's get to the surface and have a look-see. there was survivors they're with jesus now r.i.p fellow space people i just hope that your bodies are blown close enough to my location so that i may give you the burial you deserve in my stomach yes i'm endorsing cannibalism i mean i know it's wrong but aren't cannibals just people who are fed up with other people <sighs> get it fed up Let's return to the pod and make a mobile vehicle bay, despite not having any vehicles to actually make yet. Release the vehicle bay. Okay, but I don't think it's a good location underneath the pod, but you're the boss. Hmm, we can climb on it, and now we're kind of inside the pod, but not. This doesn't appear to have been helpful at all. It's just kind of made the pod have a funny lean to it. It's not really that bad, though, and the blobs seem to be happy as they're jumping with joy. Yeehaw! Time for some more food and another radio message. Oh, joy. These Alcatara ships. They run low on engine grease, send an SOS, you offer to help, they don't pick up. You still need our assistance, over. Ah, uh, oh, less joy. It's a message of hope, except, you know, I can't reply, and more so, do I want to reply? What did I have back there? A dead-end job working as the ship's safety inspector, which we all know how that ended. A wife no, that divorced me and took my space dog. No, nothing worth going back to. I'm thriving on this alien planet, so I will stay and make a new life for myself. I might even drink enough of the seawater to the point where I lose my mind, just enough to marry one of those blobfish. Then I can marry my blobfish children off to other sea creatures. Ooh, interesting. They stick to the sea creatures. This is a game changer. Do they work on bigger creatures? Come here, you weird farting seal. Nice. I like what I'm seeing. It's enhanced his mobility so that he can perform circus tricks. This is a very interesting development indeed. Keep it in mind for now as I'll probably do it again later in the video. But First, we have another message to hear. Hopefully not another one promising rescue, right? Fingers crossed it's more people who have died. The last thing the captain did was give me coordinates for dry land. Regroup one and a half kilometers southwest of the crash site. Ah, thank you. So, we've now got the knowledge of possible dry land, which is exciting as water isn't dry at all. Let's head towards the crash site now. Oh, wreckage, my favourite thing to explore. Graph trap? That's interesting. It's either a gravity trap of some sort, or something that holds gravy. Either way, it's ours. Okay, continue towards the life pod. Oh, this certainly looks like a rather bad 
barren out of draw distance piece of land we'll get to that in a minute first i want to check out that life pod i won't lie about this one it doesn't look good in here but they do have this ultra high capacity tank this is just getting more and more tankier and breathier and earlier ah you see we've got close enough now where things have started to load in and it certainly looks a little more inviting with all these trees even though the island is apparently floating on giant blobfish i'd say it's still inviting i do however get the impression that we're going to be scanning a lot of plants now oh god it's like i'm working in the fresh veg section of tesco's ah oh, there is some grow beds we can learn too which is more plant stuff oh what's this you aren't a plant cave crawler huh you're a long way from home little fella oh it did a little jump that was equally cute as it was terrifying let's give it a science test Look. yes this has enhanced its life therefore making it better at floating i am a healer of wounds fly high little guy you will find a cave again one day stay strong so amongst all the plants there's this structure here which makes me wonder how long i was in the life pod unconscious for as this is pretty rusted and dirty looking but more importantly we can scan it a multi-purpose room oh i have so many purposes in mind for you well just one actually and i'll get to that later a war planter looks planty spotlight i spot you first a stasis rifle that could be a weapon interesting i need to go down there but there's a crab posing no threat to me so i will kill him to express my dominance you have been dominated now we get some ultra glide fins which i guess are just a bit finnier than fins we're already wearing a bulkhead door nice lots of blood in here but i'm happy to ignore that as i've just found a battery up the mountain i saw more structures so we'll check those out more plant stuff an observatory i do like to look at things so this could be very useful the day is dawned and i think it's time we head back to our life pod to see what new things we can build first though we need to get down from this mountain i'll take the shortcut which is pretty much just walking off the cliff <gasps> ah stop your complaining you'll miss the chance to break your legs when you're back in the water so to return back to our pod rather than swimming all the way back like some kind of caveman i figured we'd try that blobfish trick again but this time with this mini life raft just have to get on top of it and carefully aim ourselves towards yeah okay and pick it up uh, oh oh joy we're going completely the wrong way i guess this is one way of checking the island out though let's try that again get on aim and uh, yeah okay that wasn't high enough uh yeah that's a tree yeah great attempt three and off we go bye bye island thanks for the memories one more should do it Whee! ah home sweet home i grabbed a couple of fish on the way back to make our dinner as in we'll eat the fish i mean i did try to train them to cook but it was difficult i've crafted a new storage locker apparently you can't drop anything inside the life pod which is disappointing so we'll have to place it in the water outside oh apparently the life pod doesn't want me to stand on it let's try that again this looks like a good place oh bouncy good now we can put stuff in it and forget that we have it another item i crafted for us is some of those grab traps and now i'm curious as to how it can hold gravy let's test it out on the fart and sea line interesting very interesting it's grabbed the farts and brought it to it but what does it mean oh i was concentrated to the point of death this however has given me an idea for how we can put these grab traps to good use uh well it looks cool but you know it might be overkill it's kind of caught like three fish not really worth the effort of gathering the materials to make it uh but you know what i do have a new newer idea what if we put the mobile bay under the pod carefully maneuver it so it can be climbed on and then we take our little grab traps back climb on the mobile bay so we're glitching into the pod then release our magic balls into the pod to create the world's most futuristic ball pit nice this is exactly as i imagined it chaotic let's see what it does to the surroundings hmm i was hoping it would pull more fish towards it it sure does look busy inside though which i guess is a good thing and it creates this light show which i guess is a good thing and it throws fish over the top of it which i guess is a good thing but do you know what i think the real fun is inside so let's go oh, this sure is a tiring amount of fun we're having oh, oh apparently too much fun oh oh dear there's things flying all over the place now oh there's a fine sea lion falling from the sky what have we done okay okay he's fallen for a second time it's a glitch in the matrix it's just gotta be oh a 
walls have exploded and leaked out into the ocean. Well, there's only one thing to do in a situation like this. Try it again for giggles with even more balls. Well, it sure feels a lot more bally in here. I can hardly move. So I guess we just need to jump extra hard. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, God. I guess this is pretty close to the worst thing that could have happened. Now we aren't the only things flying. The life pod has taken off too. Ooh, whale hello there. Let's get back to the pod and see the damage. It's kind of descending as we get closer and closer. It actually doesn't look that bad. Besides the little life raft inside. Whatever, we'll leave it. I want to move on to bigger things. And by bigger things, I of course mean this habitat builder, which builds habitat. And do you remember that multi-purpose room that I had a sole purpose for? Oh yes, I bet you do. Well, now it's time to test its purpose. This is your destiny room. The question in hand is, what happens if we build on top of a creature? Oh, nice. We've made him a little playpen. This is great. But what happens if we complete the build with him inside? Uh, okay, he disappears and flies off into space. Nice. With this knowledge in mind, it's time to build a base that rivals that of Atlantis. Let's take our trusted steed and find a location. Take me to safety. Oh, radiation. That is, oh, uh, yeah, ouch. Okay, okay, let's try that again. With a radiation suit equipped, surely nothing will go wrong this time. Looking good. Oh, wait, there's a whale. Oh, no. Oh, oh, God. Oh, damn it. Okay, attempt number three. Let's do this. Take me home. Whee! Um, we're on the ship, call it a hunch, but something tells me we shouldn't be up here. So let's get down. This area looks good for a base, open, clearish, giant snake creatures swimming around. Oh, wait, that's not a good thing. And something tells me he isn't friendly. We can try to trap him with our building though. Oh, oh, oh well, he's gone to a better place now. Um, it has given me an idea, so please bear with me. So I've built a secret underwater base now, not to live in though, but to trap one of those big guys. Oh yes, we're officially on the Pokemon trainer list. He sounds angry too because I've been teasing him by sticking little blobfish onto his face. <laughs> He's so cute. It has given me an idea though. Bro, you realise you're trivialising one of the scariest creatures in the game? This animal has haunted many a YouTubers and destroyed many transport vehicles. And you've caged him and stuck pink floaters to him. Uh, what? I'm not questioning him. I caged him. No, no, tr trivialised. It means, uh, j do you know what? Don't worry about it. Well, now I'm going to worry. I said don't. Well, I told you not to be a dick and you still are. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's me. Get floated, bitch. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Yeah, I'm going to toy with his emotions some more. Bear with me. And here is the fruits of our labour. I've turned the big guy into a dandelion or a giant cotton candy. Whatever takes your fancy, really. And what's cool about him now is he can fly and do all sorts of cool tricks. Whee! Where are you going, little fella? The ocean's down here. Haha, <laughs> he sure hates life now, and that really makes me happy. So I hope you've enjoyed watching my midlife crisis unfold in the form of swimming through an alien ocean, as much as I've enjoyed letting it happen. If you'd like to see more of this game, let me know in the comments section. Please be sure to give the video a like and hit that subscribe button if it's something that you're into. I would also hugely appreciate this time if people could share the video with their friends and loved ones so that we can reach a bigger audience in order to scar more people mentally. For now though, I'll continue teaching Greg Fishkins how to fly and hopefully, with a little magic and patience, find a way off this watery planet. Toodaloo for now.